Hi, I'm Ingrid Tischer. I was born with muscular dystrophy. I had scoliosis as a little kid. And then I found out I have sleep apnea and I was living with chronic respiratory insufficiency. I have pretty severe depression and anxiety. It's increasingly difficult to walk. It's quite difficult to breathe and I have really limited use of my hands. I am someone who increasingly is dependent on having other people help me with activities of daily living. For some reason, my particular diagnosis does not entitle me to in-home assistance. The doctors I've had who wanted to do helpful things for me, they can't do it because the quote-unquote system won't let them. So Ms. Tischer was approved in the past, for instance, for physical therapy, and she wasn't able to access it due to transportation issues. And so that benefit wasn't something that she could actually partake in. It's about the for-profit, increasingly tech-driven uh, practice of medicine. We have a broken medical system. Even the government providers for insurance and nonprofit providers for medical care are almost as ruthless as the for-profits. I was hospitalized for a non-COVID pneumonia, and in general, I was going through a severe depressive episode. The care team included a neurologist. He dismissed my request to go to an inpatient rehab facility. He said, look at you. you you've known this was coming for a long time, and there's really nothing we can do. And it was sort of that reaction that she faced um, that sort of led her to say, you know what, I think that it's time to die. That shouldn't happen to anybody, um, whether they have a disability or not. She seriously considered killing herself with assisted suicide, even though she had advocated as a disability rights advocate against it because she was so demoralized by a system that had, and, a, and a medical professional that had told her, I am not providing you access to that care. She said, uh, Ken, I want you to promise me something. And I said, what? She said that I can come home to die. It was the, one of the hardest things I've ever had to hear in my life. It was horrible. She heard it as a death sentence, that, you know, this is the end of the road. Decisions are increasingly being made in medical settings that are not about like a nuanced understanding of the patient, like it's, a, it's more like an algorithm deciding it. They're gonna look at my chart. The number they're gonna look at is my respiratory function, which is dismal. It doesn't mean that they're gonna tell me to my face, you should commit suicide. It's not gonna be like that. It's gonna be gently oh so gently. I'm really worried that I could easily be one of those people in the future who could have been triaged as the highest priority or instead triaged for death. When I'm not getting enough air, when I'm debilitated, that is not the time for me to have to sit up and start, you know, explaining why I shouldn't have to die. When I'm lying in a hospital bed, I deserve to be a patient. We have a society that says, you're not worth it. You're not worth the care. And they've presented a false choice. And it becomes the only choice for some people that they can see as viable. Ken is the reason, you know, that I actually am not dead. But, and if I hadn't had emotional safety, plus all his physical care, it could have gone a really different way. I don't know that I did anything except love her and value her, and know as selfish I couldn't live without her being there. <laughs> I'm actually enjoying my life now, moment to moment, in a way that I have never, ever have. And it's ironic because I'm more disabled right now than I ever have been. I don't need to get over being disabled. 
I just need to get along, you know, in the world as a disabled person.